impossible. You take the word right out from my vocabulary, tearing out that page between immune and impress. At times, I can't even recall how to spell it. And when I try, I spell Y O U are impossible. We are impossible. People tell me you, you, and that guy, fat chance. Gets back. Gets. Okay, now. Okay. But really, I'd rather have my chances fat than slim any time. You remember how we first met? We were in a poetry reading and you sat two seats away from me in a row that seated ten. They tell me that Cupid must have shot a dozen arrows that night looking at all the people who got together. Only one couple got together that night. They joked that a dozen arrows must have lodged into me, having provided the largest surface area. But see, well, one got to you, bad chance. People tell me, you, you, and that guy, when pigs fly. Pigs do fly, and I can prove it. Because every time you say my name, my heart soars. And I can tell them, guys, tama na, gets ko na, okay na. But they'll only tell me, it ain't over till the fat lady sings. So, sing. Well, I've been singing since the day we met. And honey, it ain't over yet. When I fell, I fell hard. Gravity pulling at every single excess found. But you know what? You fell with me. Despite the physics of things and the laws of people, we touched ground at the same time. In your arms, I'm a feather. On your lips, I'm a song. And I can stand here with all the fat jokes in the world, but nothing is heavier than the weight of your gaze in the back of my neck. Nothing is heavier than your name pressed onto my heart. And nothing occupies more space than a single thought of you every day. I used to stretch my arms wide, trying to grasp the surreal concept of us until I looked across seeing you doing just the same thing, looking just as silly. So we laughed and waved away the physics of things and the laws of people and wrapped our arms around the one thing we could embrace, each other. Fat chance. She is storyteller. She is the most beautiful girl. She is daughter and delight, precious gold and mother of pearl. She is treasure. She is kept and keep her covered and combed, carried in her little throne, feet like feathers afloat. She is moonlight. When she bathes in the dim black water, skim the glow of her skin. When she dances by the fire, fingers like feathers in flight. And when she sings, the world is silent. It was a practice called binukot, as she was covered like little gems that might lose their luster. She is princess. Maid of the tower, weaver of armor, caged bird, and she is storyteller. When war first came to the mountains, the people were asleep in their huts. Treasures tucked in their cases, blades resting in their sheaths. When the first screams tore the night into steel and blood, the angels or the people ran for cover, taking nothing, leaving everything, their land, their home, and their storyteller, whose feathers were never meant for flight. Since then, the practice of binukot has diminished. Fathers fearing for their beautiful daughters and the weight of the song they must sing. At present, there are no more binukot. They find it is no longer practical to princess young girls. But I am storyteller. I mean, I'm average girl. I am daughter and delight, doom and dramatic outburst. I am treasure. Like worn out paperback novel that fits so well in your hand. Feet like tree roots too stubborn to stop loving the touch of the land. I am sunlight. When I bathe in sweat, summer skin brown, as burnt as it gets. When I dance in the streets, fingers like treetops and sway. And when I sing, I ask the world to sing with me. She's gone. But her song lives on in all of us. We, the little river stones, the more weathered, the brighter. I, I am fighter. I am climber of tower, wearer of armor, free, lost bird. And I am storyteller. Thank you.